Have you been getting a lot of assignment work from magazines like National Geographic lately? No? Did you ever wonder why that is? My name is Rob Skew, and I've been shooting black and white film for over 50 years, and worked over 45 years as a professional photographer, shooting for decades for Major League Baseball and the NFL, and I've been published everywhere from Sports Illustrated to National Geographic. Maybe some of the techniques that I use will be useful to you as you learn film photography. So let's dive right in. I worked for Sony for years, and part of what I did was I hired speakers. I hired photographers to speak at conventions, trade shows, uh, photo meetings, things like that. I was part of my job. And at this one particular convention, uh, of a convention of professional photographers, and it was out west, and we brought the keynote speaker for Friday night, and he was a National Geographic photographer. And uh, he did a great job. So now it's Saturday and there's going to be a new keynote speaker. So we're waiting for the, for the auditorium to open up and uh, we're outside, the doors are still closed and we're just chatting between all these photographers. Everyone's a pro. And I said, well, how did you like the show? Like yesterday we were, you know, we put on this National Geographic show. What, what did you think? Uh, just trying to get some feedback from people of, you know, how our money was spent. And this one photographer, they said, you know, oh, they loved it. They, National Geographic was the, one of the main reasons they became a photographer. They wanted to work for National Geographic. They, they felt that National Geographic was photography. They wanted to be part of it. They became a photographer because of it. So then I said, well, what happened? Like, what did they say? And they go, well, what do you mean, what did they say? I go, well, when you approached National Geographic and you took your portfolio in and your story ideas, like, you know, like, what did they say? Oh, uh, well, no, I, ne I never did that. We never, never did th that. Oh, so you never worked for National Geographic and you also never approached National Geographic. It's funny that they didn't hire you. You know why they didn't hire you? I didn't say this to them, but they're saying it to you now. Well, there's two reasons. A, your work sucks. If that's true, then that's just unfortunate. Or they've never heard of you. Now, why wouldn't they have heard of you? Like you're, you're posting on Instagram. I mean, you've, you're taking pictures all the time and you're showing them around, uh, but they haven't heard of you. That's weird, surprising. So when I started off at newspapers, uh, people never really applied for jobs. It was a weird time. You, the, the HR department at a newspaper would, they, they would hire, do the hiring, but only in the sense of, the photo department has figured out who we're going to hire, but they need someone to, you know, do the paperwork, you know, get them involved in the, in the programs, uh, tell them about the pension, get their social insurance number. That was the HR job. They weren't really looking for candidates. So what would happen was photographers, and I was a young photographer at a small weekly paper, you would work your butt off and you would enter the clip contest, which was a monthly contest of of news photographers and any picture that had been published could be entered and maybe you would enter in sports or spot news or portraits or feature whatever there's different categories and at the end of the year there it was like a race uh, and at the end of the year there was the clip winner and that was an award and that would be that would be a good award to win kind of like a, winning the national newspaper award or the national press photographers award these were awards, uh, annual awards but some of them were clip winners where you accumulated uh, clip points every month so the common knowledge way of doing things was you would win these contests and win the clips. And everyone was trying to win the clips because that was your ticket to the real jobs. And when you think of the real jobs, I worked at a community paper, but probably the dailies, the big dailies, like Toronto Star, the Globe Mail, they probably paid twice as much. I don't know exactly, but it seemed that they were making a lot more money and they were the, the big guys. So you would try to enter and win these clip contests. We never thought of applying at the paper. It was unheard of. No one would apply for the job. And sometimes someone would get hired. And like, where did you come from? And it's like, oh, well, I was, you know, the clip winner out west. And they approached me and reached out to me. And I, you know, got the job, moved back east. And uh, now, weirdly, I remember working at a small community paper. And my first job at a daily paper was the daily paper called me and said, 
hey, we've seen your work and we'd like to offer you a job. Never did apply until after I already kind of had the job. Then you would go to HR. Now this was like the worst thing going. So I would suggest now things have changed and I would definitely do it this way now. If you wanted a job somewhere, you've got to let them know. You have to apply. And I would apply if you were trying to get a job. Now, what does this have to do with not getting work from National Geographic? Well, the reason is that they've never heard of you. And the, you, you have control over that. Now, you can send them a uh, Instagram posting with their name on it. They'll, go, it'll, they'll see it. They probably get a lot of that. Uh, you could email them. You can email them a link to your portfolio. They, they probably get a lot of that. Now, I'm in a group called the Analog Photographers User Group, apug.org. Uh, put the link below and there's when you type it in it'll take you to another website, but it's a pug Don't worry and there's forums and things like that that you can you know take advantage of now one thing that a pug does is they do a postcard club so you sign up maybe 30 people sign up and I get everybody's address and I'm gonna mail them all a postcard and they're all gonna mail me a postcard. So in the month, I will get 30 postcards from around the world and I will, in theory, have mailed out 30 postcards around the world. So I'm working on Rodeo Cowboys. That's my big project. This has not, it doesn't matter what your project is, but in my case, it's the Rodeo Cowboys. So I, I shoot the portraits, I look at the work, I make work prints, I lay them all out, and that's for a gallery show, and then I pick one or two every once in a while to do postcards of. And so I make these postcards, and I print them on fiber paper, so 5x7 Ilford multigrade fiber base, so it's a premium product, and I print them, and I mail them out. Now, a 5x7 is not a postcard, it's a different size, but it will go through the mail as letter rate, as postcard rate, if they have that in your country. So I mail these five by seven fiber based papers around the world for this postcard club. Um, and I get postcards come to me. Some are great and some aren't as good as you'd expect, but you get these postcards. Now, while I'm printing the postcards and I've done like 30 for the postcard exchange, then I do eight or 10 or 12 for magazines I'd like to work with. Now, when I say you should be working for National Geographic, I don't mean National Geographic, I mean any of these publications, you know, it could be Time or Cosmo or Vogue or, you know, Vanity Fair, whoever, whoever is the magazine in the genre of work you do. I mean, not everyone shoots National Geographic style work or, you know, does that kind of work anyways. But uh, if you want to do portraits, maybe you would send them to someone who uses portraits. So <clears throat> I print up, you know, another dozen of these postcards and I mail them to the magazines that I wish I was working for. Now, some of these magazines I've been published in and some of them I've done work for and been published. Um, sometimes the, they just buy an existing photo from the agency and you get published that way. And some of them I've done assignments for, but I'm looking for, well, I'm not really looking for an assignment. I'm letting them know what I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. I'm not saying uh, you should run the story on cowboys. I'm not saying the only work I can do looks like these portraits of cowboys. All I'm saying is this is what I'm currently doing. And it's up, I don't know what their need is. I don't know if they need a picture of a cowboy. I don't know if they need a picture of an uh, author who, who writes in the Western genre. I have no idea what they need. That's how could you know? There's so many places out there. How would you know what they need in the future? I'm just letting them know that this is what I'm currently doing. And, um, you know, maybe they'd find that interesting. So I mail these postcards to the dozen or so magazines. And in the past, I used to include photo magazines. This is just what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. And I used to get articles written about me and my photography in photo magazines, you know, regularly. Every four or five years, it'd be a big article about what you're doing now. So I do these postcards for the magazines. Now, while I'm printing the postcards, I, another, I print up another eight or 10 or 15, whatever it is, a dozen, and I send them to galleries. So currently, my work is generally shown in uh, public galleries. So it's not 
a gallery where the work is for sale. It's the show with a theme <clears throat> and it's at a public gallery. Now there are other galleries that I would like to have a show at. I, I could submit when I'm done and ready, I could submit, but I'm just letting them know I'm out there. So I send a postcard to the curator of contemporary photography at a bunch of galleries around the world. So, you know, the British Portrait Gallery, uh, Museum of Fine Art, uh, the Louvre, places that I'm not on their radar and I just want them to know that I exist. So they would get in the mail a little postcard, fiber-based paper, they, they might throw it away immediately. They might read the back, they might throw it away. They might stick it on a cork board, throw it away tomorrow. They might stick it on a cork board and it'll be there for a couple of weeks or months or whatever until they get bored of looking at it. All I'm trying to do is introduce myself. If I ever need to do a presentation and an application to them, maybe they might have heard of me. But when, I, when you lower me in the ground at the end of my days, I'm going to be able to look up and say, at least I let these places know that I existed in case they needed something. You know, you never know. The Portrait Gallery is doing a show on um, American, North American contemporary photographers. And they, you're not going to get a whole show with them, but you might get one picture in the show. You might, they might ask you to submit one picture. Uh, you know, the magazines, they, they might not need you every day. Maybe 99% 99 of the work is not your style, and they need certain photographers for that. But maybe... 1%, maybe every once in a while they're doing an article on some author, some poet, some artist, something that is applicable to your style. And if you haven't let them know that you exist, they just can't call you. They have to use the same, the same guys they've been using forever. Now, they're probably going to use those guys forever anyways. But being having a unique style, it might get you some work occasionally, which is all I'm trying to do. So for years now, I've used postcards. I mail them out on a regular basis. I do the postcard exchange. I do the magazines that I want to work for. I get some work for that occasionally. I would say over the course of the years, the postcards have always returned some benefit and I do it with the galleries as well. So what, so what are you doing? So what could you do that is different? You know, if you, if you do this through email, everyone's doing that. It's like when I was at Sony, everyone used a 70 to 200. Well, your pictures are unique, but everyone's using the same lens. They have that footprint of the 70 to 200. I would say, in a sense, your photos do kind of look the same a little bit. They've got that, they're not that different. You know, you, you shot with a 70 to 200 on digital. If you compare that to someone who is hand coding film on a tintype, and that's what their idea of a portrait is, you would say, well, that's unique. You would say, you don't need that all the time in the magazine. I don't need that every month in Cosmo, some tintype, but I might need it every two years. And if, if you don't need all the work, you just need some of the work. And if you have this weird, unique style, the, you know, you've got a throw a pretty wide net but you just need some of the work and at least you get to work in your genre now sometimes when um, sometimes when a place hires a photographer they just they just need a camera what they need is a camera operator and they need they've got a problem and they need a solution for it and you own a camera so you're the solution so they don't need they don't need your visionary problem solving skills they just need a person with a camera in that geographical location. So that's there's that kind of work, but if you want to if you want to do the work where you're showing your vision, there's going to be less of that and you're going to have to find that work and let them know that you're there. Just saying that's what you're going to have to do.